Hello friends, how are we doing today? Welcome to um, the ICT lesson and today we'll be looking at classification of computers. You would agree with me that all computers don't look the same, they don't have the same size, neither are they used for the same purpose. So we have to look at how these computers are classified. Well, computers can be classified by type, size, generations, and purpose. So let's look at first classification by type and see what is under it. Now, under the classification of type, we have three main computers there. We have the digital computers, analog computers, and the hybrid computers. We say that the digital computers, these are computers that processes countable objects. For example, your calculators, laptops, and almost microcomputers. Analog computers, these are computers that processes uncountable objects, things you can't count. For example, I can't count my heartbeat, but if I have a stethoscope, I can easily use it to say, okay, it has beat once, it has been twice, okay? Two, I can't count water, but we can use liquid dispense meter to know the amount of water we have taken. Now, next we have the hybrid computers. Hybrid computers are computers that combine the features of both digital and analog computers okay now for example we have the uh, the heart rate monitor you go to some hospitals you see something that is beeping like this uh, uh, this beam and it's moving beam. now what that thing is doing is that it's trying to count or it's trying to look at the number of times the person's heart is beating i remember we said we can't really count the number of heartbeats if i ask you how many times has your heart beat to, since i started to you started looking at this video you can't count it but for the heart rate monitor, you can do that for us and represent it in a digital form. Okay. Also, we have modern control pumps. Now, classification by size, like the word size, has to do with how big or how small something is. Now, supercomputers. These are the biggest computers in terms of size. So, supercomputers are the biggest computers in terms of size. They are also the fastest. We have an example there, CreST3. We have mainframe computers. They are big, but not as big as the supercomputers. Please take note, and they are found in banks, universities, and all that. Then we have mini computers. Mini computers are smaller than mainframe computers. Okay. Then the last one we have there is microcomputers. Now these are the smallest in terms of size. They can perform many tasks at a time. A very good example is your mobile phone or your laptop. They are microcomputers. Your PC, the desktop we have in the ICT lab, they are microcomputers. But nowadays, there, there, there is one particular type under size that has been talked about. They call them nanocomputers. So whenever you hear nanocomputers, I didn't add it to this note. You know that these computers are very small and tiny. Okay? They are very small. We call them nanocomputers. When we meet in the class, I'm going to explain more of that. Now, we have classification by generations. Good. I'm very interested in this one. Now, classification by generations. First here, we have the first generation computers. Now, take the first generation computers were very big because they were the first computers that were made. They were so big, one could be as big as, your, as the stadium or as big as an entire building. Okay, and they produce a lot of heat because of the way they work. And they made use of one particular device that we used to identify them. And that device is the vacuum tubes. Okay, so first generation computers made use of vacuum tubes. Remember I told you they were very big and produced a lot of heat. They took a lot of electricity. So all of the scientists over then, the, the scientists at that time were like, oh... This computer is too big, it's consuming lots of electricity. Let's do something. What can we add or what can we put to this computer or use to make another computer that will make it uh, 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 smaller? And then they thought of the transistor, a new device. Now, the transistors were used to make the second generation computers. The second generation computers were smaller a little bit and they worked faster. But still, after a while, the, the scientists believe that they can still make these computers work better if they can bring in a new device and then they brought a new device called the integrated circuit okay and they use those integrated circuits to make the third generation computers 
and the third generation computers work faster and work better they are even smaller and people were happy but still after a while they weren't that happy because they needed still smaller computers and computers that worked faster and then they thought of something they would do again and then they discovered the microprocessor which was the main processing device for the fourth generation computer so they used it to produce the fourth generation computers and the scientists were happy and they made that you see examples of fourth generation computers we have our laptop okay my laptop is, a, is an example of fourth generation computers even your mobile phones but even as they were using the fourth generation computers the scientists still want more they wanted computers that can mimic human behavior Computers that at least to an extent will think like humans or carry out tests and samples. And then they started making computers that made use of artificial intelligence. Okay, computers that can learn. And that give birth to the fifth generation computers. An example of these fifth generation computers are robots. Okay, you have robots, you have uh, computers that make use of AI. Okay, so we like, remember we said, as we speak now, there's a, there's a robot in Mars, okay. Mars, we call it the Mars rovers, even the Chinese sent their own robot there. They are trying to explore what the environment looks like. Okay, this, this computer does tests and things. Now, classification by purpose. You will agree with me that not all computers can do everything. For example, we have general purpose computers. These are computers that can be used for various applications based on the software that is running on them. Okay, my laptop or the computers in the ICT lab, they are general purpose computers because I can use them for typing, I can also use them for playing games, I can use them for different things because they can do so many things. Now, number two, special purpose computers. These are computers that are designed for specific purposes. They don't do what any other thing. They're only designed for that thing. For example, your car speedometer. You don't use it for any other thing apart from reading the speed. Yes. Some digital wristwatch. You only tell you, they only tell you the time, they don't do any other thing. Those are special purpose, they are only meant to do one particular thing. Okay, now we have some evaluation questions here. I'm going to take them with you so that we like say, mention the key features of each generation. Okay, this is a recap of it. The key features of each generation is that first generation computer made use of vacuum tube. Okay, and they were very big. Second generation computers made it of transistors. Don't forget that. Second generation transistors, third generation integrated circuit, fourth generation microprocessor, fifth generation artificial intelligence or machine learning. So we have the first generation vacuum tube, second generation computer transistors, third generation integrated circuit, fourth generation microprocessor, fifth artificial intelligence. Now it says, what is the difference between digital and analog computers? Like we said, digital computer processes countable objects. Analog computer processes uncountable objects. List two examples of digital and analog computers each. Example of digital computer, your mobile phone, your laptop. Example of analog computer, stethoscope and the liquid dispense meter. Then the last question here says, how many generations of, how many generations of computers do we have? We have five generations of computer first generation second generation third generation fourth generation and fifth generation computer all right we have looked at it okay please copy your note when you don't copy your note when, when answering the question if you are confused or, or find it difficult come back and watch the video and then you'll get your answers right take care of yourself see you in school bye have a great time ahead